Okay, today we're going to study black body radiation. And let me just, uh, well, <clears throat> what's a black body? Uh, let me show you one thing. This is a good model of a black body. Uh, our book has a, if you go to, uh, what is it, chapter 27 of our book, you will see a black body. And so this is a box. Uh, it's a foam box. It, it's not the best, but... Uh, if I, if I uh, shine a light on this opening, there's an opening right here. Let me see if you can tell. I'm putting my pen inside. So this is an opening. Notice that it looks completely black. And so even if I shine a light on it, uh, there is no light that escapes it. It still looks uh, dark if, if you look at it. And so what happens is this, any light that comes into this box, is trapped inside. And so, and that light gets converted into energy and it, it gets trapped in here. And uh, so, so if you notice right here, this is a sketch from a book, it's pretty much the same thing. They do an opening uh, on a close volume and a small opening. And when the light comes in, it gets reflected inside and it gets absorbed. Well, that energy is emitted. And so, we say that a black body is a good absorber, so it absorbs all of the energy. And then, so it takes light and it's emitted as heat. Uh, so we are kind of black bodies. We re uh, 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 receive uh, thermal energy and we em emit a, uh, we radiate energy. And you're probably aware of this, if you ever go to Disney and you, or, or Universal Studios and they lock you in those rooms to watch a movie, you notice that it gets rather hot in there because our bodies are emitting uh, a lot of thermal energy. And so th that's what a black body is. We're gonna get more into this and you will see why that is important. <clears throat> now, uh, Wings uh, was trying to, Come up with a mathematical model, and physics will come with a mathematical model that it will relate the uh, the peak weight limb, and so with the temperature of the body. So there was an association, and what they did basically, what he did, is uh, he built an x y axis. Yeah, on the y axis he put the uh, the intensity of the light. And then on the y-axis, he put the wavelength. <coughs> and this is the temperature of the, uh, in Kelvin, the temperature of the body. Now we call this the peak wavelength. And so this is the peak wavelength. And so peak lambda. He actually came up with a really good model. And, uh, his model was this. So he will measure the wavelength, and so lambda, and then lambda peak. And he will multiply by temperature. He always got a constant. And so here is the equation. So lambda peak, so that's the maximum lambda. Multiply by the temperature in Kelvin, and that gives you 2.898 times 10 to the negative 3. And that was an excellent model because it actually showed uh, a very, very good relationship between the two values. Uh, and so we're gonna do some examples. This is kind of, uh, kind of difficult to grasp. Uh, I remember when I was in high school and when I was in college, it, it, it took me, I had to go through it over and over. Again, this is the temperature. This is the, uh, so temperature, this is the wavelength and then uh, the peak wavelength. And this is the wavelength, yeah. Now, and then it tells you here, uh, the area under the curve is actually the total radiation emitted by uh, that substance, okay? <clears throat> the model worked really well. And I'm, I'll explain to you. And so let me, let's do some examples. I, I went to a party not long ago and I noticed they have one of those uh, patio uh, heaters, gas heaters. And, and I noticed that the bottom was blue. You can see it right here. 
the bottom is blue and this is nothing. And then there was some stuff that was kind of yellow, yellowish. And so there was a little section right here where it was yellow. So this is yellow and this is blue. And then the other one is red. And you can see this area is red. The top is red. Yeah. <coughs> We're going to use wind equation to approximate the temperature of each one of those zones, the blue zone, the yellow zone, and the red zone. And the math is really simple. All you do is, uh, I'm going to put P for, for lambda. So lambda peak uh, multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin is equals to uh, 2.898 times 10 to the negative 3. So 2.898 times 10 to the negative 3. Or I can say 0 0.002898. And I am looking for the approximate temperature. So look how simple the math is. And the model worked perfect for a while. We'll see when it broke down. So. I divide by lambda p, I lambda p, and I what I did is I I googled the average uh, wavelength for red, and so let's see for red is seven twenty, so let's use for red, so uh, <clears throat> so the temperature for red, yeah, it would be equals to uh, zero point zero zero two eight nine eight divided by Lambda peak, and lambda peak is about 720. So 720 times 10 to the negative nine. And that will give me the temperature in Kelvin. And so I put 0 0.002898 divided by 720 times 10 to the negative nine. I get a temperature of 4,000. 25 Kelvin. That is really hot. So uh, <laughs> I, I, by accident, one time I touched something that hot and uh, it gave me a blister immediately. I, I'm embarrassed to say it, but that, that happened to me. I don't know what happened. So you're looking at 3,752 degrees Celsius. That is incredibly hot. It will sear your skin immediately. <clears throat> And so if you ever want to approximate the, uh, the temperature of anything, you can use this equation, yeah? And uh, it is really um, accurate, let's, let's put it that way. Now let's take a look at the yellow zone. And so I'm gonna use yellow for yellow. And so the temperature of the yellow zone, it will be the same thing, 0 0.002898 divided by, now the yellow, I got it to be 580 <clears throat> because it was uh, uh, blue, yellow, and red. So 580 times 10 to the negative nine because that's nine nanometers. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> so I go back to my question, so 720, instead of 720, I'm just gonna put a face book 580. And I get a temperature of 499. So you know what? I'm going to round it to 5,000 Kelvin. Wow. That is hotter yet than the red. Now let's take a look at the blue zone. So I'm going to use a blue color for that. So the temperature of the blue is going to be 0 0.002898 divided by, now the average, uh, Big wavelength will be 460 nanometers, 460 times 10 to the negative nine. And that gives me <clears throat> I'll put 460 here. And that gives me 6,300 Kelvin. How much hotter. And notice one thing, look at the logic. The gas comes out of here at the blue at the bottom and it burns. Oh, so this one gets very hot. And then as the gas goes up, so it's burning, it gets colder and colder. That's why the red is uh, colder. 4,000, you call that cold. And then the blue is 6,300 Kelvin. 
So, <clears throat> so you will look super intelligent, you know, you ever have your calculator, your phone, you write this formula, and then you can actually approximate the, the heat really, really well, very accurately. Let us continue with our uh, math over here. So today is gonna be a super easy day. It's difficult to grasp. And so I, I recommend that you go back to this and look at the three pieces of information because we're gonna need this information and I need you to process it. Again, big wavelength. That means there are some lambdas on this side, some lambdas over here. So uh, the lower lambda, upper lambda. <coughs> And you'll see why that is important. Notice the peak there. Notice the peak there. Yeah? And look at the temperature. OK. And so <clears throat> now our sun looks white to our eyes because it has all the colors, uh, visible colors mixed together. And so notice that the green is in the middle. So we're going to take the average you know, and, and, and get the uh, the mean wavelength. And we're gonna estimate the temperature of the sun uh, with it. So we're gonna say, oh, use some Wayne's equation. So the temperature of the sun is, will be 0 0.002898. Uh, let me make sure I, I have a horrible memory. Okay, 2898, I said 2898 and I wrote 298, you see? That's why I need to check. Divided by 550 times 10 to the nine, uh, to the negative nine, sorry, nanometers. So let's estimate the temperature of the sun. And so if I go this, I hope I don't get it wrong. That would be embarrassing. 550, I get a temperature of about 5,300. I'm gonna round it to 5,300 Kelvin. Uh, you guys can Google what is the temperature of the sun. It should be close, you know. Uh, it, it should be close to 5,300. Okay, don't make me Google it. Uh, you know, I will, I will check right now. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to check. Uh, okay, this is embarrassing. I just checked the temperature of the sun. I, I took my thermometer, went outside, and uh, according to Google, <laughs> the temperature, which is actually close, is. Uh, 5,000, uh, uh, according to Google, is 5,778 Kelvin. Okay, I miss it by uh, a few hundred Kelvin. If you touch it with the hand, you will not make a difference. You will get disintegrated anyway. No, um, it depends how long you touch the sun. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> this, is, this is just, uh, I, I saw the problem in, uh, they probably use a different wavelength. I just took an average green, which is 550. Uh, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Now, what about uh, our body temperature? It's 98.6 and I converted this morning, I converted to um, 37 degrees Celsius. Then I changed it to, uh, let's see, make sure I'm recording. And so I change it to, to Celsius or centigrades, and then I change it to Kelvin, 310 Kelvin. So I want to know what is our wavelength, you know? And so uh, now, so let's see. We know that uh, lambda peak, lambda peak multiplied by uh, the temperature in Kelvin is equals to 0. 0.0. Uh, 0 2898. And I am looking for lambda. So I divide by our body temperature, and that should give me the uh, <clears throat> lambda peak. Okay. And so uh, lambda peak should be equal to, and this is the radiation we emit. And so let's see. So 0 0.008298 divided by. Our body temperature, which is what? Uh, 310. So I'm just going to be lazy and put 310 Kelvin here. Oh, no, no decrease. That's embarrassing. Okay, Kelvin. Okay. And so divided by 310. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay. What happened? 310? Okay. Uh, okay. That gives me oil. <clears throat> I get 9.35 uh, times 10 to the negative six meters. Yeah. And so that will be, uh, let me see. Uh, no, I'm not in the nanometers, that's too much. So this is micrometers, uh, micro, yeah. And so lambda P, that's equals to, let's see, yeah, 9.35, and that will be micrometers, yeah, which is in the microwaves. Uh, so now <clears throat> this is infrared line, so we can, uh, microwaves. <laughs> micrometers, and so this is in the infrared light. So that's why we can take an infrared lens and then be able to, to see our uh, uh, the infrared the radiation. Okay. Now tomorrow, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, let me do one more example. So I want you to see something. Now, why is this called Wayne's displacement equation or Wayne's displacement model? The reason why it's called displacement because uh, as the temperature decreases, and so let me show that, as the temperature uh, <laughs> decreases, the, the peak wavelength, the peak lambda, uh, the peak lambda uh, moves towards the longer wavelength. Oh, so it gets displaced. Uh, you see, here's the peak wavelength, here's the peak wavelength, and the colder and colder it gets, the, uh, <clears throat> the more you displace the wavelength. And so that's why it's called the displacement equation, okay? Uh, now, there are, there are times where uh, the, dis the, the Wayne's displacement equation fails. Let me give you an example. You know, those glow sticks that you break, and I also have those uh, in the house. Um, they produce light with a wavelength of 575 nanometers. And uh, we're going to use this to uh, the waste displacement model to estimate the temperature. And so if I go uh, back to the question, remember we had temperature is equals to 0 0.0 to 0.898. So let's, let's use that. So the temperature is equals to 0 0.002898 divided by lambda p, okay? And so it, it should say a peak wavelength. So 575 times 10 to the negative nine meters. And so that will give me an approximate uh, temperature of the glow stick. And so now take a look at this. So, uh, oops, uh, divided by, 575 times 10 to the negative nine, I get a, uh, let's see, temperature of 5,040. And that'll be Kelvin. And you know what? You and I know that that is not the case because a glow stick is cold. And so the model breaks down there. Also, it breaks, over here, let me show you. Uh, the experimental data show that this is the model, yeah? And waste displacement equations show that as you increase the intensity of, uh, of, of the uh, substance, uh, the, the energy, uh, as it gets hotter and hotter, it predicted that uh, lambda will get uh, smaller and smaller. And so if lambda gets, uh, let me see. So if lambda gets smaller, then you get a high frequency. And if you get a high frequency, then you end up producing a lot of UV light and gamma rays. And, uh, and this is called the, uh, the ultraviolet catastrophe. It really messed up the model because this is what the theory will say, but experimental data show this. And tomorrow, we're gonna see how Planck corrected this. Like he, he 
made up a model that worked really well, and it explained this. And again, if you ever see the ultraviolet catastrophe, uh, that's what it means. When Wayne's displacement fails, and again, it fails when with the glow stick, and it fails on an oven. When you put charcoal in an oven, uh, if you ever seen this, it gets super hot. Yet the it doesn't produce ultraviolet light. Otherwise, a lot of people who have cancer, people who make bread, people who make bricks, uh, goldsmiths, all these people will be uh, they will die of cancer, and that's not the case. So the model failed. And again, tomorrow we're going to see how it was correct. And so hopefully you find the math easy. Uh, let me just repeat, go over this and think about it. Go over this uh, active figure 27.2 and see if, you, if this makes sense to you. Okay, adios.